Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the Butterfield Bermuda Championship, which starts tomorrow. Um, it is a cut event. Um, doesn't have that many players in it, though, so it's kind of a modified cut event. But yet still, I do prefer the cut events over the non-cut events. It challenges you a little bit more. And uh, I also like this type of event without the big name players because that also challenges you more. It challenges you to overcome your biases with respect to what type of players you expect to see at 10K versus what you expect to see at 8K. Just remember, all fields are, are relative, you know, and just because you see a guy like, I don't know, Alex Smalley at 9,500 doesn't mean that he's a bad play, even though you're used to seeing him at 7K because it's all relative to the rest of the field. If I told you that Thomas Dietrich was going to be the, the top salaried guy and 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 Adrian Moronk from Poland, who no one's heard of, is going to be the third highest uh, salaried player, you, you'd think I'm crazy. But that's the way these kind of lower level events work. But it's still 100K for first. And the process is still the same. So I'd like to get that type of, you know, that type of uh, top, that type of environment, you know, Um so what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach this exactly the same way I do every other slate. I'm going to go tier by tier. I'm going to go through my favorite plays in each tier. I'm going to talk about ownership. And uh, then at the end, I'm going to kind of recap with who I think is going to win, who I think is the top play from each tier and things like that. Um, it shouldn't take that long. And again, I'm sorry for it to be slow to get to it, but uh, the good news is, is the ownership uh, projections are a little bit tighter uh, because we've made a late, wait a little bit longer. Uh, just one thing is that uh, there is going to be an ownership update for true DFS premium subscribers uh, a little later on tonight, I believe. Um, so don't take what I'm saying uh, as gospel and don't take my, my end result, uh, my end uh, ownership projections as gospel either, but there are, is going to be an update on this uh, coming a little bit later. Uh, nonetheless, at the top, you have, what do you have? You have one, two, three, six guys that are in the 10K range. And I only have three of them even playable for me. Uh, I am not getting to any of Thomas Dietrich at all. Um, I am not getting to Moronk at all. And I'm not getting to Aaron Rye at all. Um, the three I am getting to are Power... Uh, Mark Hubbard and Denny McCarthy. Um, I don't have either of them as my top play uh, in overall, but I think of the top, the 10 K golfers, I do have Seamus power rated the highest. And what's cool about that is that he is the lowest owned of those three. I mentioned between power Hubbard and McCarthy, at least currently I do have power as the lowest owned of them all. So that's probably where I would start is, is him as kind of like the best of the overall 10 Ks. I have McCarthy at 21% ownership and, and rated my third top 10 K guy. So he would probably be the weakest of those three. But I think the important thing is that um, I would, I would probably full fade. Um, and I think I'm going to the, the other three, uh, Rye, Dietrich and, and Moroc. All right. So, in the nine Ks, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine golfers in the nine K range. And let me see if any of them even stand out. Yeah, I actually like four of them. Um, four of them I think are somewhat playable, and the rest I don't think I'm going to get to. The top rated of them all I have is 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 Patrick Rogers. Um, I have him fifth as overall value on the slate, and his ownership I have is a relatively decent 14%, not terrible. And then I have the aforementioned Alex Smalley, um, who I referred to in the intro. Um, I have him as a top 10 value, and he is looking to be about 10, 11% owned right now. So I think that's very, very fair. And then I have two more. One is going to be Nick Hardy. He is my fourth rated 9K guy, excuse me, third rated 9K guy. I have him 13th overall. And I have about 12% ownership. Like So, again, I think this is very fair. And then uh, the last one is Young Young Kim at 9,600. He's another guy. I mean, all these guys are just not used to seeing at this price tag. But, again, just, just 
block that out of your mind. You know, you're still building lineups, the salaries they give you. We're running the same type of models to come up with the projections. And and uh, don't worry about what you think these guys are usually priced. Um, it's not like the NBA. The NBA, these guys are usually priced the same, depending on who else is on the slate. But since these guys are all competing with one another for actual position points, it's just a little bit different. Um, so I do like Kim. He is, his uh, ownership is about 11%, so that's fine. So basically, all the other guys in the 9K range, I'm just not going to play. Uh, Lauer, Sig, Jaeger, Knox, Shelton. So that's already somewhat some decent value added there. I mean, I'm basically Xing out a good amount of the 9K range. And, and the reason for that is you, you'll see why. I mean, there, there are just a lot of guys we want to get to in the seven Ks. So we want to, we want to, uh, what, what should I say? Just increase our optionality as far as those those plays are concerned. All right. So let's look at the eight Ks. Wow, the eight K range is pretty thin for me. I actually only have three eight K golfers that make the top twenty in value. Um, let's just go over who those are. First of all, let's see how many 8K golfers there are in the field. We have, boy, we got a lot. We got one, no, not really, about 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 10. And I only have three of guys I really want to get to, especially in my hand builds. So in order, we're going to look at Callum Taron at 8,200. And he, you know, no surprise, he's the most popular of them all. He's 14%. That's maybe a little bit more than I want to pay as far as ownership goes. But the next guy here, Michael Gligic, he is at 8,100. I have him as a top 10 value, and he's only garnering, at least for now, 6% ownership. That's really strong. Um, I'm going to be significantly over the field on him. That's that's for damn sure. And then um, the last guy that I want to highlight, well, let me give you three more. Now, let's, 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 let's be greedy. Let's cut it off. Um, is Austin Ekrat. I have him as top 20-ish value, and I have him at about 10%, which is pretty, that's reasonable, okay? So those are the three guys that I want to highlight in this range, Taron, Gligic, and Ekrat, uh, if you want, fine. Then the next guys I would have were Adam Shank, um, Brandon Wu, Will Gordon, Eric Van Royen. Those would be the next group, but they're, I have them, should I say significantly below? Not, I guess not significantly below, but below enough, given the fact that the guys I mentioned, like Shank and Wu, I think they're going to be double-digit owned. Um, so I would I would probably fade those in the names of these other guys that I mentioned before. And then you get to the 7K range is where kind of all the action is. I mean, it, of the top, Literally 22 golfers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11 of them are in the seven Ks. So, uh, you know, you're going to want to spread. Um, but let me just kind of highlight at least oh, how many I want to give you. Well, let's, let's, let's start with the top three because no, you know, let's, let's give you four of them because I have one, two, three, Four 7K golfers, they're all in the top seven values. And I don't think any of them are getting ownership. Actually, one of them is. I guess from the bottom up, the guy that's getting the most ownership of these 7K guys I like is Sam Ryder. Um, I have him rated um, seventh overall and the fourth best 7K guy, and he's at 10%. But then moving up, you have Ben Taylor. I have him as the third best 7K and below uh, 7,900 below fire fighter um, golfer. And I have him at about 7% ownership, which is extremely strong. And then I have my top two guys. One of them we, we, we know and the other one we don't. Uh, the one that we know, let's go in first, is Austin Smotherman. We played him a bunch. And he, I mean, let's 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 call it what it is. We played him at this price against much better golfers. Okay. And now he's again in a field with much weaker golfers. So, uh, and I'm having showing him as kind of the top play by a decent amount, actually, at about 7% ownership. 
And then the guy that I've never played before, but there's a first time for everything, is Zicheng Dao. And if I mispronounce that, I apologize. How do you not play a guy like this? A guy you want to bring home to your parents. Um, so uh, he is the second best overall play on the slate for me. And I actually am kind of psyched to see he's getting a little ownership, if you want to know the truth. Like, I'm seeing him at about 8%. When I have a guy that I've li literally never heard of, and he's like 1% owned, I get a little nervous. But because he is getting some love, I have to feel he's got to have something, right? So uh, I have him at 8%. He's my second best, I guess, overall play on the slate for what it is. So, you know what we can do just for fun? I'm going to build a Saber Sim lineup, Saber Sim build, just with these projections. Again, these are going to change, especially the ownership piece. Um, just to kind of see what I would get if I built 150 with max variance and all that stuff with the information I've just given you. Now, again, I recommend SaberSim for whoever will listen. And let's see, PGA, pull this up. And let's build, uh, he's not in, I think I can screw up, screw up, exclude all out players. Let's build it at 150, full 150 max as far as variance goes, cranking the sim variance all the way up to the front. Let's see what I get. Let's see if we even get the guys that I mentioned. Sometimes you just don't. Sometimes the way these the, the way Saber Sim works is who you think you're gonna get, you're gonna end up not getting. So let's just see what they what they give me. Um, as a, how funny is that? Top owned guys, the guy I said was gonna play zero. Adrian Moronk. And then I get Aaron Rye, third highest owned golfer, guy who's going to full fade. And then I have a 15% guy I didn't even mention, the Tano Goya. So this is what happens when you use SaberSim and you build it for max variance. Now, if you instead rank them by projected score, then you have the guys that I was talking about. But I'm still getting more of this, of this, of this Adrian Moronk. Um, which is somewhat interesting. Um, um, I have to look into that a little bit more. In any case, I guess that's about it. You know, nice and short, nice and sweet. Actually, you know what? Let's go through it. Let's do my, 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 my game here. Who is going to win the tournament? Well, I'll make a very powerful play and go Seamus Power. Top guy under nine under 9,900 to make the top five. Well, let's go with Patrick Rogers. Top guy under 9K to make the top 10. We're going to go with the legend Callum Tarrant. Top guy under 8K to make the top 20. I mean, what if we didn't play Zikan Dow? I don't know what we're doing. And top guy under 7K to make the cut. Um, guy I didn't mention, but the one guy I have, and I usually only have one, would be Augusto Nunez. He's my top-rated guy under 7K, so I figured that he would be the guy to make the cut. Um, then I want to give you also top guy over 9K to, to miss the cut. Well, there, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my projections and see which is the lowest-ranked 9K and below guy, and, and above guy. And that would be, unfortunately, Adrian Morrow. Um, so that'll do it. Uh, good luck in tomorrow's, uh, through the weekend slate. I'll probably have a showdown slate, uh, for Sunday and that'll do it. Good luck.